Hi Room 5, I hope you are all well. I'm missing school so much, especially our P Waka Waka syndicate meetings. Mrs Munn uh, asked me if I wanted to read you a story and I said yes please and I've chosen one uh, because I know how clever you are and how much you love maths and it's called Nesta and the Missing Zero. I hope you enjoy it. Nesta and the Missing Zero. It's missing! cried Mr Abacus. I've definitely lost it. Lost what? shouted Nesta through the window. Nothing, he bellowed. I've lost nothing. Nesta frowned. But you said you lost something? I mean, I've lost zero, he replied with a sigh. Oh, what a naughty number, the number naught must be, to run away from home like this and not come back to me. Is zero important? asked Nesta. It's important if you're a number, said Mr Abacus. Add it and you'll stay the same, subtract it, you're still you. It can't divide but multiply and you'll disappear from view. A zip, a zilch, a zero, a nothing and a naught, an itsy bitsy circle that can't be found or caught. Zero must be a very odd number, mused Nesta. It's not odd. It's even, barked Mr Abacus, but enough of this nonsense. We have to find it. He snatched up his coat and led the way straight up the garden path. Out of the gate they went, like a rush of sparrows in spring, out into the world where there was... Chaos! Zero had disappeared from the face of the earth. Cars crawled along roads, clocks went crazy and chimed one o'clock instead of ten. People missed trains and caught wrong buses. Letters were delivered to 23 Main Street instead of 203 Main Street. Computers crashed, phones stopped ringing. The bank had to close when one billion dollars became one dollar. People on the street wept and shouted, We want nothing! We want nothing! Don't worry, cried Nesta. We're number hunters. We'll find it. Nesta and Mr Abacus searched all day. They saw several somethings. They saw many anythings. They even saw everything. But they never saw nothing. Eventually the sky was so dark that they had to trudge home. Nothing was nowhere. Nothing seemed gone forever. Once inside, they collapsed on the couch. Nesta said, I'm fed up with looking for nothing. Maybe it isn't real. Maybe nothing doesn't exist. Oh, oh, what terrible words. Mr Abacus clutched his heart. The jars in the kitchen shook and all the numbers turned pink with shame. Then they became a frenzy of pushing, tumbling and squeaking. Zero is our hero! Zero is our hero! Nesta squirmed. But zero has no value. It's a blank. It doesn't count. At that, the glass jars shattered. A whirlwind of numbers whizzed around the walls and rattled the doors and windows. Nothing does count, bellowed Mr Abacus. It's a lovely round number, the most important number of all. Without it, the other numbers don't make sense. Without nothing, Nesta, when you are nine, you'll be one on your next birthday. Oh, I hadn't thought of that, she whispered. Mr Abacus shouted into the whirling air. We really need you, Zero. We love our quirky Zot. Without you all is chaos. You show us what we've got. Nesta's small voice tugged at Mr Abacus's ear. Do you think, perhaps, maybe, Zero would come back if I said I believed in nothing? Try it, urged Mr Abacus. 
The flying numbers rustled and jostled before settling on the shelf to listen. Try it, Nesta, try it, try, try. Nesta looked around the room. She felt something there waiting and she was sure the something was nothing. She called out, I believe in you, Zero. Yes, I believe in nothing. Outside the world echoed, yes. Suddenly everything made sense again. Road signs were right, trains were on time, people knew which bus to take, and everything went like clockwork. The world was back to normal. In the mathematician's house, the numbers settled down happily with their beautiful zero and a brand new number jar. Mr. Abacus made mugs of hot cocoa while Nesta looked out the window and counted her blessings. It seemed that every blessing had several noughts added to it. I hope you enjoyed my story, Room 5.